Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Peter Newton, and thank you for joining me on the sweet AI Math Mesh tutorial. In this five piece series, we're going to touch on Math Mesh and also extensively go over the behavioral tree, which is the backbones to any AI. So, in this tutorial, we're going to be creating a Math Mesh, creating an AI character, creating the controller, we're going to create waypoints, data assets enums which will define the state of the bot we're actually going to create the behavioral tree which is what controls the bot we're going to create tasks for the trees decorators and services and as we go along i'll deeply explain each of these different components so let's get started i'm first off going to show you what i've done so far and what you're going to be making today so as you can see, there's these floating text that I add in the HUD just to easily identify what's going on. These are different waypoints. It's mark one, two, three, and this bot's chasing me all goddamn. Ah! And there you go. You see the bot clearly works. It kind of scares me sometimes. And uh, there's a few different actions that I have in them. So you see he patrols slowly, he's going to go through 1 through 6, and nothing's going to stop, and he sees me again. And so nothing's going to stop him from <laughs> getting, to the, getting to the different points. And so let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I simply just duplicated my level over here. And of course, there's these props. Oh, I forgot one thing. Can't forget this, huh? Forgetting my own name. I'm not really good at jokes. Uh, so let's get our volumes. I'm going to call it Nav Mesh Bounds. Let's slap this right here. The top perspective. Geometry mode. Let's get these points, drag them out. These points, drag them out. Now this nav mesh bounds must cover the entire area that you want the nav mesh to generate on. So that also means the floor. Anything above the floor, like the stairs. And so as you can see, it covers just about everything. Let's go to build. All right, so we got our nav mesh built. So to make modifications to your nav mesh, you have to go to the recast nav mesh, and you'll find the settings in here. And then it has different options that allow you to change how your nav mesh displays within the editor. For now, I'll leave it as how it is. In order to create your AI bot, you have to use a pawn that a player normally uses. We're simply going to modify it so that it can accept input from the AI controller. And so normally you will see it's this blue man. But today I'm going to be using something different so that my guy can shoot. If you recognize this character, this is Owen from the content example pack. I've simply modified him to hold a gun and add some other particle attachments for the muzzle flare and trails. 
so within your bot character, now you need to create two event dispatchers. One will notify the character that the enemy has been found. The other will notify the character that the enemy has been lost. So enemy found. And create another called enemy lost. And now say for example, this will be my main character. When the person left clicks to attack, he shoots the weapon. When he lets go of the left click, it st he stops his attack. And so you want to drag out the event found and click event. You want to drag out enemy loss and click event. I'll simply show you how to change the animation of the character. So say if you want him to fight, punch, or play some animation you have stored within your mesh. You want to get mesh. You want to type in play animation. And these are stored animations within your content browser. So as you can see, there's rifle jump, reload, idle, and things of that nature. Now this would be different for everyone, but that is how you would play an animation once someone was found. And then when they're lost, you will simply reset that animation back to the default. And the way you would do that is git mesh, animation, mode and use animation blueprint and this will reset your character back to the default idle position or whatever position that you have stored within your animation blueprint so let's save this out compile now we need to create that AI controller so let's go to new blueprint in the custom classes section type AI controller select that and you type bot AI enter now you notice there's different components one here we want to type event begin play and run behavioral tree so right when this character spawns it immediately goes to run and so we don't have our tree yet so let's just save and compile the next thing we're going to create is a enumerator and these basically are used for defining options or states in a strut format so let's go to new miscellaneous enumeration we're going to call this bot state let's double click that hit new we're going to call it patrol the next one will be search the last one will be attack The next thing we want to create is a data asset. So let's go to new, miscellaneous, data asset. Blackboard type, and we call this bot data. And this will allow the bot to store information that the functions can reference to. So the first thing we want to create is target point. And this will tell the bot the next location it needs to go to be a blackboard key type vector the next value we're going to create will be the state of the AI so let's type state and let's go to key type enum and let's drop this down and we're going to select our bot state 
The next one we're going to create is enemy actor. So let's drop this down. Enemy actor. Key type object. Next one we're going to create is route. And this is how the bot, the next waypoint to patrol. And for now, we can minimize that. Next, we're going to create is the AI bot. Now, by default, this option is not enabled. So you need to go to Editor Preferences, Experimental, and under here, you will see Behavioral Tree Editor. You want to make sure this box is checked. So let's go to new, miscellaneous, behavioral tree. I'm going to call this bot AI tree. And let's open this up. Now the first thing you will notice is a blackboard asset. You want to click here and change this to bot data. And this will tell the bot tree that this is blackboard data it will be accessing and referencing to the whole time. And the next thing we want to create is the AI waypoints. And these are simply modified target point actors. So let's go to new blueprint. Under custom classes, let's type target point and type bot waypoint let's open this up new variable position and let's go change the type to integer and let's make that a editable variable let's save that compile that's it and these will basically define the position that this waypoint is in. So if you notice earlier, it started off here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you actually read my mark waypoint, that's how they're defined internally. So zero is the first position. One, two, three, four, five. So the next thing we want to create are the tasks. And so one of the tasks you notice, my character walks slow and then he speeds up. So let's go back to the bot character and let's create event tick. Next, we want to get character movement. From here, you want to set max walk speed and let's pick this to here now we're going to create two variables and this will be speed rate we're going to make this a float and create another and call it speed variable So the speed variable will be 150 by default, and speed rate will be 1 by default. So you want to pick speed rate, hit get, and speed variable, get. You want to multiply these by each other. So float star. And pick the results to max walk speed. And this allows us to easily modify the speed rate variable and they'll multiply the speed variable and control the max speed remotely. And so let's pick this, pull this down here. And that's all you need.
everything below here is just my shooting system. So just ignore that for now. Let's save. Compile. The first one we're going to create is the change of walk speed. So let's go BTT under custom classes. Click task blueprint base. Let's type BTT bot walk speed. So whenever you create a behavioral tree task, you have to first start off with event receive execute. I'm going to comment this, call it begin execute. The next one you have to create is finish execute. And the reason for these two notes is communication between the behavioral tree. And so it's going to tell this node, receive, execute. And then once you're done, you tell the tree, finish. It's as simple as that. And the owner actor is the controller being manipulated by the tree. So let's do cast to bot AI because that is our AI controller. Next, we want to do get controlled pawn. Next, we want to do cast to bot character. And this is so we can access that walk speed variable. So let's get set rate and let's pick this to the finish execute. Now we can comment this and put change bot walk speed. Another variable you want to create so that you can modify this outside within the behavioral tree is the walk rate. And this will be a float variable. And we're going to make this edible. Hit get and pick this to the speed rate. Compile. And the default rate will be one. Now that you completed your first behavioral task, in the next series, we're going to instruct the bot on how to get to its next route.